Do you get nervous when you speak? <laughs> you know, it really depends on it really depends on how much weight is on that that message. If I am getting up in front of a small group of friends, then I don't get and if I have my mindset in the right place that, oh, these are friends and mm -hmm. they love me, I love them and we're gonna laugh together. I'm, I'm, I'm st I still get a little, I still get a little nervous. If I'm getting up in front of a lot of eyeballs, we have a big club and if there are a lot of people I don't know, it's that evolutionary thing that kicks back up. It's, mm -hmm. it's oh, you know, what will the community think? And I'm, I'm getting gray in my beard now. You know, am I, things that I say, am I beginning to age out? And, those kinds of those kinds of fears that I think everybody deals with start start cropping up. Or if I'm moving into like if I'm trying to raise money, or if I'm I'm going into um, I have an investment firm. If I'm I'm going into a large pitch that there's a lot on the line, then those nerves come up a little bit as well. Not if I, that's the, one of the reasons I'm still actively involved in Toastmasters is because I'm getting my reps. Mm -hmm. And I notice that those nerves come down the more I'm practicing. So yes, but that can be minimized. When you do have those high stakes pitches or speeches, are there any techniques or things that you do before? I know some people will either focus on their breathing, maybe they'll do an actual breathing exercise. Some people will have uh, some of the NLP people will have their anchors that makes them either confident or comfortable. Is there anything like that or do you just say, you know what, whatever happens, happens? Mine, mine are all mindsets, really, if I think about it. Getting myself in the right mental, pos or, the, or the mental position where I have noticed that I perform the best. One of them I mentioned earlier is, is say, putting a prayer into the universe. Thank you for that one individual who's whose life will be changed by this message, whether I ever know it about it or not. And it, it focuses me on a, an intent outside of myself that even if I make mistakes and, and sputter and oz and ums all over mm -hmm. the place, then even in that failure, that one individual sees the humanity and maybe hears the message. So, that, so that's one mindset. A second mindset is, is, is Reminding myself, you probably heard this before, that the same physiological things in our bodies that we feel when we're nervous are the same physiological items when we're excited. And so I will walk around, if I feel those things, telling myself, oh, I'm just so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. You know, I'm really excited. Hey, 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 Blake, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> and hey, Mike, and I'll tell myself, and, and there, then, so that, that's a corollary is, is if I hear my own voice, I'll say it out loud, if I hear my own voice saying, I'm really excited, I'm excited, then our brains tend to pick up on that. You know, mm -hmm. they recognize voices that we recognize, yeah. especially our own. So there's there's that. There is I think I think those are the those are the main ones. The the other I, I read a book recently called Four Thousand Weeks. That's about time management, but one of the things he talks about in there is recognizing um, our place in the universe, that in the, in the whole scope of the cosmos, that what we do is not going to make or break the world. And, and so just that would be the third thing I would say is reminding myself, I could come up here and vomit on stage <laughs> and the planet's going to keep turning and I'm going to be able to have another shot at doing that again. So the altruism, the hearing myself, you know, focusing on the excitement of it and the, and the message, and then, and then remembering that, that it, this is not the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fatalism can be a useful tool. It can be. Of, it, even just putting things into perspective, like cold calling someone was a, a big jump for me because I'm, I like working alone. I'm, I don't know if I would call myself introverted, but when you do have those moments of nerves, excitement, just putting the whole thing into perspective can be super, super calming right. in a way, whether it's the world will still turn or whether it's what am, what am I capable of biologically? What did people do a hundred years ago? Men my age were storming the beaches of Normandy. If they could do that, I could pick up a phone call. Right. If I, I like, if, then I can ask for 
for money and then I can pitch because I'm putting it in perspective and I think it's it's so easy to get wrapped up in our own worlds our own, own battles but when you zoom out that's I think uh, a useful tool yeah yeah I love that because it's it's short-term and long-term tactics right mm -hmm. if it's great to have a vision that I'm gonna I'm gonna move in the direction of building the next Amazon but if I'm getting ready to go on stage and I'm focusing on my building the next Amazon is contingent on how well I do on this speech. That is a recipe for <laughs> for yeah. failure, for at least yeah. stammering and and messing up. But if near term fatalism, if I think ah this speech is meaningless really, then ah I can flow and I can be easy. And ah, if I fall mm -hmm. off the stage, then it's it's funny. So so it's a short term tactic versus a long term 